Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This game is considered by many, far and wide, to be considered one of the best damn games of all time. I'm talking fans will go and throw down in the streets and try to whoop your ass if you go and talk shit on this game. Not only is this game respected for what it brought to the table in terms of just what it did for gaming, but it's considered one of the best within its genre, one of the best of its era, one of the best on its platform being the Nintendo 64, now even on the 3DS because that damn good remake, and one of the best from the camp of Nintendo. You figure the Legend of Zelda franchise is one of the crown jewels for Nintendo. You know, the Nintendo Empire is able to go and reign supreme thanks to franchises, AAA franchises, such as The Legend of Zelda, one of the most epic adventure game series of all time. And Ocarina of Time has stood a test time. Ha ha ha, pun intended. And bust out the Ocarina and go and travel through time and shit, go from a little kid to being an adult. And you do all this shit without the TARDIS. That's pretty fucking nice. And you do it without DeLorean. So that's pretty fucking badass. But anyway, so this is obviously a game that people love and respect and play through all the fucking time. I've seen speed runs of this game, I've seen ROM hacks of this game, I've seen people go and play through the physical version of the game, I've seen people do so much with this. I've seen it run on multiple different game engines, I've seen it remade, I've seen it demade. It's The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The title alone suggests excellence. I've seen tons of debates and arguments over this. I've seen reviews. I've seen people just love and admire this game. And it's something that's just a big part of gaming. Now fast forward to today. You have Mega T. Garrett, who is visually impaired. This dude's blind and he played through the entirety of this game from start to finish. This is a big time deal to gamers and it should be because that is something I found to be one of the coolest damn things ever. I saw that title, I was like, holy shit. I clicked on the video and I sat there watching it and I was just amazed to see how he was going through this. And I've read tons of different articles, watched various videos and heard lots of things about how visually impaired people, anybody who's blind wants to play a game and how it's set up. When he was playing through it, he had two speakers and he was doing this through emulation. So through a lot of save states, so that he could keep retrying different sections of it, played through the game. I'm just like, holy shit. This is, this is amazing. You know, I felt proud watching this. Like, I felt good. There's a lot of times I've seen people go and best a game and I was just like, man, that's awesome because that's such a big time achievement. You know, us as gamers, we want to go and see somebody truly go and get the high score, go and defeat that boss, go and do anything and everything that they can within the game, because it's just an awesome feeling. You know, you want to go and celebrate that, and this is something that I think is worth celebrating. When he played through that, and he was, he was guiding us through the adventure, showing how he had to go about different tasks and go after some of the monsters, after some of the bosses, how he had to go through some of the dungeons. I'm just like, holy hell, dude. This, this, this is one of the coolest damn things in the entire world. Yeah, you, and, and I, I had seen some people going and downplaying. I'm like, well, how can he truly enjoy a game like that if he can't see it? It's a video game. Just because he cannot see doesn't mean that he's not having the same exact experience that you are. You know, he's experiencing it in a whole new way. You figure, okay, Koji Kondo, who did the music for, when he composed the soundtrack for Ocarina of Time, which I still consider personally, I still consider this to be one of the best works that he's done ever. You know, and, and, and there's a lot of folks out there who will argue and debate over which soundtrack from Legend of Zelda is going to be the best, but I have considered this to be one of the better ones of all time. He got to experience that music in such a different way that we wouldn't even be able to perceive. You know, the mixing and mastering of all the audio within the game, that was his way of understanding what the heck was going on. You figure you're able to hear all your footsteps, you're able to hear all the different monsters, the noises that they make, every single action that you take, you're able to tell what's going on. And he was doing everything through trial and error, and this is over the course of years. Years that he put in this time and dedication. That is impressive as hell. I mean, that, that was one of the things, like, I smiled seeing him go and defeat Gam. I was just like, hey, I'm sitting there applauding, applauding at a screen to see somebody going and beating a game, because I'm just like, dude, 
that fucking rocks right there. And, and you know, and some people are like, yeah, well, others have done, like, the game blindfold, blah, blah, blah. People have done speedruns within, like, just mere minutes and blah, all this other shit. Who the fuck cares? Why are you downplaying something like this? Why aren't you celebrating? Why aren't you cheering him on? You know, I don't see why people want to go and tear down something that's beautiful. I don't really get it, because this is fucking great. You know, it, you, you got to go through all these different things in a way that I won't understand. You got to go through the Forest Temple in a way that I'll never experience, and the way that you did it, I found to be way more impressive. I'm just like, holy shit, dude, that's, that's so fucking awesome. Like, just, that's, that's fucking bad. You got to go into the Shadow Temple, you got to best everything, you got to beat all these, like, Wow. That, that's all I can say is wow. You know, I love hearing about stories like this because I think it, it's just one of the nicest things that it, this is how I want to start off my year. This is how I want to start off 2016. This is my first video of 2016 and this is starting off on a high note in my humble opinion. You know, I, I've seen, like I had said earlier, I've seen a lot of articles and, and stuff talking about how they have made games from the ground up for those who are visually impaired. And through a lot of sound cues, through things that are done through touch, like on tablets and on anything that's got a touch screen, they've been able to go and make things like that. And I just thought that was really kick ass. You know, I've seen uh, games that were modified controllers that were specifically designed for anybody whose motor skills weren't capable of being able to pick up a controller and use it in such a way. And this is just another one of those things that somebody was just using sound, just using speakers. They figured their way out in using save states through emulation. And another reason why emulation has really helped a ton of people out there, because without it, he wouldn't have been able to get through this game in the way that he did, because he had to go and keep trying over and over again for certain sections of the game, because without it, he'd get stuck, and you you wouldn't know what to do. So this is, this is just, it's lovely, man. It is. Like, th this right here, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But Megan T. Garrett, my hat's off to you, sir. You know, I, I just found this to be a really compelling story and something that I want to go and share with everybody. In the description, I'm going to have the link to the video. I highly suggest you to watch that. Watch that in its entirety from start to finish. It's not an extremely long video. It's like a, around, what, 12, 13 minutes, some shit like that. Watch it in its entirety, because I think it's really cool. He's also got other videos on there. Maybe go and give this dude a subscribe. You know, it, I think that it's worth it, considering what he had done. And I just, I, I find that to be really cool. Not only that, but I feel that this could even instigate other people to try the same exact thing, feeling that they, they may not have had a chance in the world to do something like that, but now will feel invigorated to do such. You know, th this is cool. It, it really is. This is one of those things that I'll also tell people out there who haven't give the, given the game a shot or haven't completed it, but like, well, why the fuck haven't I? I totally need to. And it's a game well worth going and seeing through to completion. I mean, shit, the very first time I got to go and bust out that gold cartridge and look at it, I was like, dun 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 dun, just holding it up and was so happy. And me and my friends are talking back and forth at school. You know, and just talking about, oh my god, did you go and see this? Oh, no, no, no. You know, we were so excited. We were kids, and we are just excited as hell that we were playing through this game and just loving every single bit of it. And here I am, years and years later, still talking about it. Got to go and complete on Nintendo 3DS when they did a remake. And now I'm talking about somebody who, years now, has been trying to go and finish this game on his own, and he did. So that is fucking awesome. Anyway, this is Alpha Omega Sin, as always, nerds, nerdettes, and gamers game. The fuck off.